Hello, I'm Paul Larson. Ghosts frequent the Clinton County, New York house of media personality Gordy Little. In this author visit, the writer discusses his ghosts and other spirits who appear in the book, Ghosts of Clinton County. How many years were you on the radio in Plattsburgh? 36. And how long have you been doing the public access television programming? Since I left the radio business in 1997. Okay. People also know you from writing for the Press Republican, and now you've had a book published called Ghosts of Clinton County. Is this your first book? First published book. You live in what you say is a house that is haunted by ghosts. Where is this house? It's in Morrisonville, in the hamlet of Morrisonville, right next to the, the fire station. And how many ghosts would you say have been in the house? You know, I never thought of that because you take each event as it happens, but I would say uh, uh, as few as five and as many as ten. Who do you think some of these ghosts were in life? One of them was a small boy who drowned behind our house in the 1950s. Others are relatives that we lost through tragic uh, accidents. Others are people who lived in or who actually built the house from the 1880s onward. Let's hear about this little boy who drowned. How did he appear in the house? His name was Vincent Olson. And anybody who lives near a North Country River knows they rise drastically in the spring and very often flood. And the Saranac River rages most springs. And he simply fell in. His little body wasn't found for two weeks. His parents grieved, the neighbors grieved, the fire department searched for that little boy. Soon after he drowned, his family members woke in the morning to see him standing in the hallway upstairs encased in a beautiful, radiant white light. He just shows up when he feels like it. And it's like he's saying hello. One, one night he simply showed up sleeping on a love seat in our living room. So it just happens and then he's gone. And you've seen him yourself. I have not personally seen them, but my family members have. You mentioned your family members have seen ghosts. Would you please read a passage from your book, the one about your daughter Barbie's bedroom? I would be delighted. Barbie was involved in uh, a number of these stories, and her daughter on Long Island has been involved in, in a new generation of stories, if you will. Are you ready? Yeah. More than once, Barbie would come downstairs in the morning with a story that never varied. It always started with a feeling of foreboding when she went to bed. Her room was dark, with the only light filtering in from the hallway through the louvers in her door. She'd always see shadows outside the door. Her fear would intensify when footsteps sounded. The doorknob would turn. She would dive under the covers as the door opened and the footsteps continued around her bed to the other side. She'd then stop, and Barbie would actually feel the bed go down as someone or something sat on it. Unable to speak or scream, Barbie would endure the terror as the unwelcome intruder eventually left the bed and walked out of the room. She said she was never touched by the ghostly guest, but was always shaken by the experience, which happened numerous times over the years she lived at home. Barbie's room soon came to be dubbed the ghost bedroom because of all the things that happened there. So you live in this house that actually has a ghost bedroom. <laughs> we dubbed it the ghost bedroom for a lot of reasons, not the least of which was this strange wailing crying that happened long after I had written this story and it was unknown to me how it could be possibly attached to the house. I like to investigate. And suddenly, when I interviewed somebody almost 10 or 12 years later, he said, I knew who that was. Those were my grandparents or whoever that lived in that house. And the mother, when she lost her little boy, never liked to show that she was weak never cried at the wake, never cried at the funeral, never cried in front of her kids, but they would awaken 1.30 in the morning and hear crying coming from that bedroom 
which at that time was the master bedroom, but she would sit on the side of the bed and grieve for her lost little boy. Why do you choose to remain in a house that you say is haunted? I love it. I mean, this is tremendously fascinating for me. The house has been relatively quiet in recent years, and I don't feel threatened by it at all. A chapter title that really interested me was Spirit Piano Teacher. What happens in this story? Just yesterday, as we're recording this interview, I took a book to that woman named Sarah and handed it to her because that's one of the most delicious scenarios in this entire book. And this, the story about the piano teacher is just a wonderful one about an aunt of hers who lived in Willsboro and a horrible story about how Sarah's father dropped the whole family off and then just disappeared down the road, how they lived there for a while. And the, this Aunt Louise, as they called her, was quite ill at that time, but she was a respected piano teacher and a pianist. And the long story shorter is the fact that they woke up at night, all of them upstairs, hearing this beautiful piano music, waited for Uncle Mike to get up, went downstairs. The keys in the piano were moving. A beautiful uh, moonlit night. The piano was lit up in the parlor and tremendous music, but that was repeated several times while she lived there. So the Aunt Louise had passed on and was still playing the piano. Still playing the piano. So some people seem to like their ghosts. Uh, oh, there was, yes. There was a man that you wrote about who actually invited a ghost from one home into the next home he was moving into. Absolutely, and I see him almost every day, and he just waits for that ghost to appear in his new home. Why do people like their ghosts? His ghost has helped him out many times, as, as I wrote about. And he needed a certain piece of equipment for something he was doing, and it was lost. And he stood in this one particularly powerful part of his house in West Chazy and said, hey, I need this thing. Just then a basket f fell down and it rolled out onto the floor. Yeah. A camera was missing and it showed up. And so he's, he thinks his ghost is there to help. Talk about guardian angels. I think this might be the case. What do you think we can learn from reading these stories? I think we can learn that the human spirit, the human consciousness, the human intellect uh, survives. I think it was who you are sitting here talking to me today. At least part of you was here long before you were conceived and will be here long after you're dead and turned to dust. Same thing with me. I think people should pay attention to their surroundings, not to become paranoid, but when you hear something go bump in the night, for goodness sake, get up and see if it was the cat falling off the bed or, or, or whatever. Pay attention because you might, you might end up with one of the stories in my next book. Author Visits is a production of Mountain Lake PBS. For more information about the authors and their books, head to our website, mountainlake.org.